so I'm going to just start with a short introduction and then invite folks to introduce themselves as well. Uh, my name is Shilpa Jane. I'm based here in Berkeley, California in the US. Um, it's two in the afternoon over here. I've um, been working on conflict transformation, healing, bridge building, community building for over 25 years, which feels wild to say. Um, I am that old. Maybe I don't look it. That's because I do this work. I get to feel fresh and young all the time. Um, but I'm um, very deeply committed to that. I work with an organization called Yes, um, which uh, works at the meeting point of personal, interpersonal, and systemic transformation with change makers around the world. Several folks on this call I know from that work which I feel very delighted about. And I also spent 10 years in India working with Shikshantar um, in its first phase um, as a learning activist there. So deeply committed to unlearning, uplearning, healing, learning together, building, especially across the divides in our societies and our world. Um, so really happy to be here with you all as we dive into this conversation on what the importance of learning and building bridges um, through conflict healing and healing of our traumas. So thank you for being here. I'm gonna invite you all to introduce yourself a little bit in the chat. And I have a little prompt here to if you wanna share um, where you're calling in from, um, a word or phrase about how you're feeling today and a sentence or so about what brought you here. Why are you here today? What, what brought you to this call? There's so many places you can be with your time and energy. Really grateful you're here. And why are you here? So if folks would be willing able to put that into the chat. And then we'll also invite folks, if that's not possible for you, you can hear from a few folks out loud as well. Um, welcome, Rebecca and Marie from San Jose, Costa Rica. And Carolina. Yes, and my guys in touch Hello, I'm Laura, but I'm, I'm walking, so I cannot stop. I'm in Mexico City. I'm an artist, somatic therapist, and I don't know, I'm here, I'm walking to the market. Thanks, Laura, happy to be with you and happy you're walking. Walking is a very important part of movement as we're working in this world, yeah. Thank you for all the feelings that are coming in from Hitoko, Emma, Karen. Beautiful, lots of flow, lots of love, <laughs> intuitively showing up, connecting, finding inspiration, curious about connecting across trauma. Thank you so much, everybody. Beautiful to hear your introductions. Does anybody else wanna share out loud? Anything that brings you here today? You wanna to name for the group? It's not easy to put in a phrase or in a few sentences. Okay. Well, all of this is so welcome. Thank you everyone for sharing why you're here and how you're feeling. All of those feelings from hungry and tired and exhausted to excited, energized, connected. All of these feelings are welcome. and. We're going to be working a lot with our different feelings around conflict, around bridge building, around, um, yeah, what it is to do healing work and learning work. So just grateful for all of you being here. A lot of my background on conflict and, and bridge building comes through um, my own childhood and a deep sense of needing to be a bridge builder. I grew up in the U.S. as an Indian American um, person and had to connect to so many different cultures and places and people um, all through my childhood and through my life back and forth to India as well and in the U.S. and then speaking Spanish and connecting with folks through this language and then traveling in the Middle East a lot and working there so so many different relationships and opportunities um, and something that I've just come to see over and over again is that conflict is like it's just like an, an essential part of what it is to be in community, that I can't really be in community if I don't accept the existence of conflict and the inevitability of it. And can I flip my frame on it so that instead of seeing that as a problem and something that's broken the community, that I could see it as an opportunity for things to come together again and to, to strengthen deeper in community. Um, 
So that's a little bit about where I'm coming from and why I wanted to host this space. And to me, it's like an essential part of unlearning um, and uplearning is shifting this relationship to conflict towards one of this up possibility of bridge building. So before I get into too much around that, um, I'm going to invite us to share a little bit in our in a jam board about what it means to us, what each one of us feels around conflict, transformation, bridge building, all of that. And um, I'm going to put the link here in the chat in a second. Oh yeah, here, maybe I'll show this graphic before I put that link in. This is, this is an essential reframe that I wanted to offer for our time together. So there's this beautiful quote from Maladoma and Saban Fusome, that conflict is the spirit of the relationship asking itself to deepen. And whether you're feeling conflict more that looks like more like what it looks like on the right-hand side, or just like two people on the same boat, but kind of going different directions, or if it feels like something on the left-hand side, like a big ball of fire and a lot of energy and people standing um, with a big bridge to cross, maybe there might be some diversity there, but wherever you are, all of that is welcome. And I'm gonna put here in the chat is just these pages. Are folks familiar with Jamboard? You know, I'm just showing you a little tutorial quickly. You'll, you can grab a sticky note and answer this question. What does conflict transformation or build, bridge building mean to you? And you can put in whatever you like. So you grab a sticky note of us say it means um, the meeting point of differences, seeing each other. For example, I type something in and I just hit save and it's gonna turn up on this board and I can move that post-it note around to another spot. Um, I made two pages for this, so page four, uh, three and four. And I'm just gonna put it here in the chat. And then I'll stop sharing my screen so you can go ahead and add to this. I would love to hear what does it mean to you? Beautiful. And as you start, um, maybe I can share the screen again as folks are adding some answers in here. Anybody lost and need support? Or if you can't get onto the Jamboard for some reason, if you're on your phone or walking, you can always put it into the chat or just speak it out loud and I can add it in. I can't get into the Jamboard. <laughs> Okay. Do you want to just share out loud, Luna? Or sure. So, so you want to know what conflict means to us? Yeah. What is conflict transformation or bridge building? What, is, what does that mean to you? Uh, all the above means to me that we find comfort in those who agree with us and growth who the, with those who don't. Beautiful. I'm going to add that in here. There's some more coming up onto the Jamboard here. Anybody want to popcorn out some of what you're seeing? And I'll do a little screen sharing as well. Lots of things are coming in and coming through. Anything speaking to you particularly? See a lot of perseverance and acceptance, honesty, authenticity, respect in relationship. We have in Spanish here, aprender juntos, juntas, transformar nuestro mundo con empatía y ganas de comprensión. The willingness to, to comprehend, to understand, empathize, the possibility of healing. If you need more space, you can always go on the second page. There's more space there. Energy for change. Beautiful. So many reflections. Co-learning. Differentiation. Anyone want to share things about what they're seeing here? What are you noticing as you look around the board? And there's some more in the chat. Thank you, Emma. I'll add those into the board as well. I'll just add the, the theme of relationship. 
Mm, thank you. What do you what do you see about that? Um, most of these words to me are like our supports of staying in a relationship: authenticity, honesty, perseverance, mm. um, ways that we can stay in good relations. Yes. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I've often heard it said, I can either be right or I can be in relationship mm. when it comes to conflict. And it's always a choice point. Sometimes I really want to be right. <laughs> and sometimes I have to say, is, is it more important to be right or is it more important to me to be connected? Is it more important to be understood um, versus being right? Those are different things. So yeah, thank you for naming that. Anything else anyone notices here in this in this jam board? I, I guess possibility. So there's no guarantee necessarily that the bridges will be built, but there's a possibility for it. Mm. Beautiful, Megan. Yeah. yeah. How, what does it mean to like hold that hope of that possibility in this time, right? That I could build a bridge, that I might be able to make a connection, that I might be able to transform this conflict. Yeah. And it often feels like when I'm in a space of conflict, sometimes it feels like the walls are really narrow and there's no space for that possibility. So transformation can sometimes feel like just like the opening of the, the oh, it may be, maybe something is possible here that I didn't think about before. Yeah. And what does that do for our reimagining and our unlearning and our healing? Anyone I else? think I might, I just would say like, I feel like looking at the jam board and thinking about my own response to this, like it's easy. I feel like there's this kind of like superficial level of like wanting to talk about conflict as an opportunity and like a door opening and like, but it's also really, really hard. And I really want to bring that in, you know, not to gloss over the real difficulty and the almost like allergy that I have toward conflict, you know? Mm hmm Thanks for that, Erin. Yeah, it's so important to hold that too. That's also part of the truth. It's not easy. It is hard. It's really hard. And I'm seeing what Ella wrote here in the chat too, that it can feel overwhelming. Um, I can't get out of it and I don't have capacity to respond to all of it. It can feel like a lot. Hmm. Yeah. And, and conflict avoidance. Thank you, Luna. Yeah, that also comes up, right? Um, so what does it look like to transform? It means like, oh, I have to face it. I see that seeing it, listening, empathy, but this is also work and it's important not to undermine or minimize. Like it does take effort. It does take effort to hold a possibility. It does take effort to put in that work, to listen or empathize. It does take effort to find the common ground. Um, and sometimes I have capacity for it and sometimes I don't, right? Sometimes I'm tired. I, I can't. And that's really important to notice. And we're going to spend some time being able to also look at that in, in our conversation today. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking in conflict, as you said, like uh, related to geography. And when there is no space, uh, it's, it's time to open the space to get perspective and go to listen and not doing just to find the ways to to live or to like the plants that they grow i'm in the city and they grow even when there is concrete in the floor i can see plants <laughs> Even when it seems there is no earth that hold them, that they still grow. Thank you for that, Laura. Yes, that is so powerful. So somehow through the concrete, things still grow. And we can see that. And so what is that? And I just want to invite you each to maybe take a moment here and just imagine maybe a conflict that might be present in your life or a bridge that you're trying to build with someone or someone's or some place. And just imagine that if it feels really hard, what part of you is that plant that can grow in that concrete? 
And could you imagine that on the other side, maybe that person also could have that too, or those people or that place. And as we're here to reimagine, that's such a vital, beautiful metaphor to give us, Laura, to reimagine with. So just holding that in your heart as we go forward. Thank you all for all of these beautiful insights. We're going to come back to them and come around to them again as we continue our conversation. So I want to give a little bit of context. Um, I'm going to share another image here on the Jamboard. It's on the next page after the, the um, our, our senses of what bridge building and conflict means to us. And it's an image about the fields of transformation. And I remember when I encountered this image now almost 20 years ago, or this concept that transformation and change happens on these three interrelated levels, this felt super expansive for me, that something can change internally, personally, what's going on inside of me, how I feel, my perspective, my story, my narrative, the way I feel, the way I understand my own health or capacity or well-being that might be more or less expansive, things could transform there. They can transform interpersonally in my relationships and my communication. And oftentimes you think about conflict interpersonally, right? Me and another person. But there's also this element of conflict that lives internally, right? Like the story I tell myself about myself with myself or with you know what I'm what the story is that I'm telling about who I am in relationship to other people. And then there's the relationships, the interpersonal, and then there's a st systemic and in our world. And I, I saw in Emma's comment, like, yes, it sometimes can feel so overwhelming systems level transformation. What is happening? What are the factors? Whether that's the pandemic, whether that's climate change, whether that's racial injustice, whether that's, um, you know, whatever is happening in your particular community or place or in our wider world, war, you know, refugees, all, all of these things, they also are impacting where we feel um, transformation is possible. But what also helps me in this is that they're all interconnected and interdependent. And therefore, if I shift something in any one of these fields, it's possible that they will shift in the other fields as well. That I can make some shifts happen in multiple layers at the same time. And so when I look at conflict from this perspective, there's a lot more entry points. It's not only one entry point, it's not just one way to approach things, but there's multiple places that I can draw from. And as I shift internally, it might have some shift in my interpersonal relationships, which it can also shift things systemically or as things shift in our wider system, we might notice, oh, that opens the door. And I don't know about you all, but I've noticed so much more possibility for working on conflict and building bridges actually in this time of the pandemic where people have been forced to slow down from a bigger force that was out of all of our hands. And then it's open this opportunity to say, oh, well, what's going on in our relationships? Huh, how am I feeling about myself? Am I feeling, how am I feeling about my work? Where am I feeling like I wanna change things or bring some, some healing or transformation? So just wanted to give us that context because as we're talking today, we can really work at all three levels and notice more deeply um, yeah, what, what is possible. So I wanted, I'll pause there. And if anybody wants to share anything about that image um, before we go forward or anything that's coming to you around personal, interpersonal, systemic, as we're looking at bridge building and conflict, transformation and healing. I have something that you, you, you sparked. Sure, Luna. Um, I was, I did a, uh, I participated in a conference last year with Gabor Marte. And he brought in a lot of the indigenous community from all over the world that were both academics. And one of the things that he commented on to the whole community was his own transformation about when he is engaging in relations with the, his indigenous brothers and sisters, he had to let go of his judgment that they were speaking and moving too slow. Because, and they were consciously, intently moving in a slow, pausing manner because that's how they are healing trauma, both in themselves and in their communities. It's very Western, Eurocentric to, to, to rush and keep track of linear time and, right, and speak really fast and succinctly and be efficient, right? 
So I'm, I'm doing that now. Like, slow it down. Slow it down. Beautiful. Thank you, Luna. Yes. That is, if I was going to have one walk away from this, I would be that like slowing down is absolutely essential for the healing of trauma, for the working through conflict, for the building of bridges and how we approach our slowness, how we feel about slowness might be someplace that I could do some inner work as well as interpersonal work um, and notice what, again, what slowness brings us as a gift as well. So thank you for that. Anyone else have anything that spark that they want to share in this moment? I'm really a deep believer. If you haven't noticed already in our collective wisdom, that we are much wiser together. So I, I love to have people bring in their voices. I see you, Yayo. Yeah, please. And then maybe Emma too, I see. Yeah. Curiosity, I think it's important. Like <clears throat> being curious of, of the otherness, you know, because if you think you know it all, then there's no space for, for curiosity. Yes, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, it's another great way. How do I, instead of, how can I transform my judgments into curiosity? Can I change those into questions? And that can really open the door for, for bridge building and conflict transformation. Emma or G, I just see you've unmuted too. So do either of you wanna share something? I didn't have a question. I've just been unmuted. Oh, okay. All right, Emma. G, how about you? Well, um, I appreciate that Aaron talked about space. And I just wanted to um, add to what Luna contributed earlier about, about um, you know, really having to change our, our Western linear time <laughs> paradigm and just slow the heck down. But I think that's that's it's um, it's a much bigger hurdle than just taking more time, right? Because um, part of the reason we have this culture of of fast, fast, fast is because of our the economy in which we live. It's just there's so much to do all the time. Mm -hmm. so it's, it's not conducive really to, um, it's not healing. So um, I guess that's where the transformative and the systemic overlap comes from. Um, because we also have to be conscious of the, um, of the culture and the, the, the very toxic um, uh, pro overproductive culture in which we live. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, G. Yes, absolutely. And it's really impactful to notice how maybe that toxic culture of productivity, efficiency, speed, you know, what is that doing to each one of us when we're approaching the, maybe the conflicts or the bridges we're trying to build or the conflicts that we're in? When that rush comes in, how that takes us away from that opportunity to, to do the healing, to do the listening, to bring the curiosity, to bring the empathy. And so the more aware we can bring of that, be of that. Um, and I see Caroline, Carolina and um, Ellis hands here. We, the more we can bring that in, into our, the, the containers that we'll be creating. Yeah. So maybe we'll just hear from Carolina and Ella, and then we'll move in towards kind of creating a container for our work. Yeah. Um, I find a, um, a huge need to slow down in my life, but there are times when I find a need to go faster <laughs> and, and it's not necessarily bad. Like I, I have this, uh, I, I want to be careful with like the negative and the positive, you know? And so what I think is really important is just to be aware, you know? So if you're aware that you're being really, really fast, what is that doing to you? What is that doing to the group? What is that, you know? But if it works at the moment, okay. <laughs> and then the slow also, like it just being aware, I think is, is what for me is really important. If that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Carolina. Yes, it comes down to, again, listening, and being present there, what's there. Yeah, thank you. And Ella, want to share something? Here? Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to add that I feel like values of a group are important um, in the sense of when G mentioned about being crunched for time or working in a capitalist structure, I'm engaging as a settler within an indigenous community. And I was given advice from the elders there that I should move at the speed of trust because of trauma. However, what I misinterpreted was that within the community, there are those who are elected leaders who want us to move quickly because they're worried their kids are behind in education. And every day we waste waiting for other people to catch up with trauma, to, to join in the journey is at a detriment to others. So I think my contribution was, was thinking around who are we willing to leave behind for the sake of the group to move forward in terms of pace. And I think, I guess we should have tried to figure that out before we started the journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that, Ella. I think that dovetails really well into to where I wanna go, which is around the container that we're building, right? And in your case, this journey that you're talking about. So when I wanna do work of bridge building and I wanna do work of conflict transformation, and I I'm, I'm know that I'm steeped in this productivity culture. How do I shift that, right? So I, I have to become really conscious about the container I wanna build for the work that I wanna do, because if I don't, the default container is always there. The default container that we've grown up in, right? Which is separation, competition, rush, speed. Like that's our default container. And it doesn't mean it's always wrong, to Carolina's point. It doesn't mean it's always bad or wrong or something like that. It's just that if that's not my intention, it will get lost in that container, right? So if I gotta be intentional, what's my intentional? So I'm gonna just share another little screen slide here, the next one um, on your Jamboard. And this is your Jamboard. You get to keep this with you. This is, this is all for you. Oops, don't end the meeting, share the slide. Here we go. Um, so here, and so I'm gonna just give you a few aspects of what's really vital for creating that kind of container that I've learned over time. One of them is our agreements. And so here on the right-hand side, I'm just showing you some agreements. And this kind of connects to what Ella's saying about values, right? What are our values? What are our agreements? How do we want to operate together? Here's ones that I often use. You know, one person at speaking at a time, one mic at a time. It's just a human capacity. You can only hear, really listen and engage with one person at a time with my full consciousness and presence. I language, sharing from my own experience. This is how I feel. This is what's happening for me rather than you and you know, and you wonder, or we, we all, um, or they, or one, you know, something separated, but just kind of owning my own experiences here and taking that vulnerability on, right? That I, I have something here that I need to share my impact, my experience, and then listening to others from that same perspective, that this is another way to um, hear and honor multiple truths at the same time. Confidentiality, often important for creating a sacred container, a safe space where people can feel they can express without their words being taken in other contexts or out of context. Um, honoring yourself and each other, right? So taking care of your body, listening, being able to take care of um, well, how I'm gonna show up with each other and, and honor the time and the space that we have and have some respect for each other and ourselves. And then deep listening. Um, and these are the agreements, and I love this graphic of listening with the heart, right? These are the agreements I often use in creating a container. You're welcome to take them into your work. They're very helpful. And then I always make a space for people to add additional agreements, right? And then the other side of the container building is this three eyes principle, the invitation, the intention, and the language, eye language. Eye language I already touched on over here with the agreements, but the invitation and intentions are really important. And so the invitation, just to Ella's point, like what's the invitation we're making? What are we, are we clear about what we're doing here together? And so I put out my invitation or the group of people I'm working with, we put out our invitation and then allowing people to say, yes, I wanna say yes to that invitation or no, I don't wanna be part of that invitation and trusting that, right? That's a lot of our healing from our education system where we, we were kind of forced, many of us were forced to do something that we didn't want to do. And the very, the big difference in invitation is I'm also waiting for the acceptance of the invitation, right? So then there's choice. Then there's, that already shifts the channels of my brain. So I'm more open, open-hearted, showing up with presence with my participation. And then the intention, again, a shift from expectations where I'm coming in, maybe what I'm expecting, I'm making assumptions. I think the other person knows, 
they have a sense of it. Usually the person doesn't know or the people don't know, they haven't agreed to it. And we're trying to move forward based on expectations. Whereas when we make visible our intentions, which is what I you know, started the call with, why are you here? Then we all can say, oh yeah, these are our intentions. This is why I'm here. I know what I'm going for. And I can also see and make visible what other people are here for. And all of that makes our container so much stronger. It makes it possible for us to know why we're here, what we're coming together to do. And that clarity can really serve us in, in um, our conflict transformation or our bridge building work. So I'm gonna again, pause here and see if there's anything folks wanna add in as you're looking at that. This. Thanks for all the things that are coming in the chat as well. Is this making sense around the container building and why that's really vital for a bridge building work or conflict transformation work? Yeah, I see thumbs up and nods and hearts. Yeah, okay, great. And so again, I just wanna invite us to take a moment to pause in our own worlds, going back to that image that you had of your, your little dandelion coming up through the cracks and the conflict that maybe you're thinking about or something that might be present for you. And just imagine the container that you might wanna build for that. And it's a co-building process, right? It's not one-sided, but like just putting it out there. Oh, what's my invitation? What might be my invitation to that person or those people? Have I given them an opportunity to accept that invitation or modify it? Are we clear about why we're coming together? Have we set some intentions together? Can we set up some agreements to make it functional in our space together? So just taking a moment to imagine that. And I see your hand, Megan. Yeah, you wanna say something? Yeah, I just wanted to say something that someone put in the chat. I just wanted to bring it into the conversation. Um, Ella said, I remember another speaker, Sharon Stein, referred to conflict being different for those of us in high versus low intensity struggles. And I just thought that was interesting to consider when creating a, a container, um, whether or not that's something that's explicit. If people wanna be explicit about like their trauma, you know, when, when coming to a group, I mean, I think the intention of the group is obviously really important in answering those questions. But I, yeah, I just wanted to kind of pull that out of the chat. Mm, yeah, thank you for that, Megan. Yeah, I, I think regardless of the intensity, the container is still necessary, right? Like, I can't, you know, Einstein said really famously, right? Like, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and expecting different results. And if I don't change the container, no matter the intensity of the group, the container is going to reflect that. So if I'm, we're clear, we're setting our invitation forward, we made these intentions explicit together. We've set up our agreements and I saw in the chat, like we could do that collectively. You could propose some and start with that. You know, you could, it's always very important that as a group or whoever's coming together that you agree on your agreements, right? They're not agreements till everybody agrees. Um, all of that is really vital. And many times we let things like things escalate to high intensity situations where if we had the time, maybe in the low intensity moments, we could have been building some of that. Like, let's just slow down here. Let's just check in here. What's going on? I'm feeling uncomfortable. I would like to slow down. Let's have a conversation and making that explicit. So people know, oh yeah, we're going to have a conversation about that discomfort rather than springing it on, right? That springing on often is what will create more intensity than, than we need to in that moment. All right. I'm gonna break us out in small groups here in a moment, just to get a little bit more time to drop in into this. And um, for that, I'm gonna share one more graphic um, here. And this one might be very familiar to many folks here and it might be new for some, but I know for me, it's absolutely vital about where it makes the difference um, for when at which zone I'm in, in my work around bridge building and, and conflict transformation. So just briefly, these are the zones of awareness and learning can be in my comfort zone where I know everything, everything's familiar to me. So I'm very relaxed there. I'm like this cat resting in the hammock, very relaxed, but I can't really grow or learn there because I know everything there. So the curiosity that Yeo was talking about, I can't, I don't have any curiosity in my comfort zone. I'm comfortable. Um, I gotta get in my stretch zone. And by definition, that's gonna be uncomfortable. It can be a little uncomfortable or I could stick my neck out a lot like this giraffe. 
Um, well, what defines my stretch zone is I'm able to listen there. I'm able to speak from my heart. I'm able to speak from my eye. I'm present. Um, and in that presence, in that curiosity, in that engagement, I can learn, I can grow. So what was once my, uh, what unfamiliar to me can become more familiar. So my comfort zone grows. The more I hang out in my stretch zone, the more my comfort zone grows as well. And then there's my panic zone. And that's simply where I stop listening. I could look a little wild like this chicken, or I could look very calm, but, and disconnected, just, just like frozen, disembodied, right? I could look any kind of way in that panic zone, but what's the definition of that? I'm just not able to listen anymore. I'm not present. I'm not in the eye. I might be in the future. I might be in the past. I might be comparing. I start, might start using words like always and never. Um, yeah, that's when that field feels really narrow. You know, that feels really narrow. Um, and so by, by contrast, when I can get into my stretch zone, things start to feel wider. Those possibilities start to grow. Those opportunities for connection start to grow. Is that, is that clear enough for folks? Any questions about that? Because I want to offer us about 10 minutes here in a small breakout group um, to just share a little bit with each other. Yeah. Thanks, Ella. Yeah, very beautiful question. And those high intensity struggles, they're always in the panic zone. I cannot resolve conflict from the panic zone. Yeah, it's impossible because I'm not present. And I wanna maybe talk about social injustice or inequity, but if I'm always operating from that space, I can't even be in that. I'm struggling constantly to just be present. So thank you for that question in the chat. That is really, really vital to name that or name that situation, you know? We have to come to create a container out of that. I have to make that invitation, slow down, invite that space for the intentions, the agreements, and then just it just takes time and slowness to get there. So I want to just offer us these questions and we'll just take We'll just take, maybe we'll, we'll take about given the timing. Gosh, an hour is so short to do this work, but we're we're gonna do what we can. I'm just gonna create some breakouts, and we'll just get into a pair with someone else here, um, and just give yourself a few minutes each to just talk about what do you notice is in your comfort zone, what do you notice is in your stretch zone, what do you notice is in your panic zone around conflict transformation and bridge building. Is that all right for folks? Hi, everyone. Welcome forward. Can't go back, so welcome forward. And thank you all for the time you got with your partner or partners. I hope it was, I know it's the beginning, it's the tip of the iceberg and exploring these questions and just grateful for you for diving in a little bit for the, for the moments that we have here. I um, just wanna make some space. If anybody would like to share any noticings or reflections, something that stands out to you or if there are places you want to stretch, you're also welcome to put it in the chat if that's easier for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever is, whatever works. Feel free to unmute. Maybe you can add something, if you can hear me. We can hear you, David. So I, think, I think that's something that Ella and, ha and I had in common was that uh, we wanted to, we kind of knew our intention and the direction of travel that we wanted to go into, but we still had so, it was so diverse still. There were so many possibilities still in the, in the, in the actions that we wanted to take, whether supporting indigenous communities or public school teachers in my case, um, but it's still how and the way and the focus, there's still so many ways in which that could happen. And that because, Tension and a stretch yeah, and uh, not being understood at, at some occasions as well, uh, even by the people that we want to support. Mm, thank you so much for sharing that, David. Yeah, we hear that. We hear that. Yeah, there's common ground there and also trying to slow down and make sure we're building understanding at the same time. And thank you for that. Carolina, you wanna share something? Um, I thought it was very interesting to think about if there's a right place and time for working through conflict. 
especially because nowadays, like Rebecca and Marie, um, we talked about how in this time of COVID, it's like we're always moving around and it's always like in camera and it's like, what, how can we build a container to, to do that? And do we need that? Like, do we need a right place or can we just do it at the moment? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for that, Carolina. I don't know about right place. I do know that for sure, for me, I have a lot more success in working through conflicts or building bridges, building relationships, when people know what's coming, when they're not caught off guard and surprised by it. Um, surprise will often put people into panic, into their panic zone, because they're just not aware. So they go into defensiveness or reaction or trying to solve or fix or, um, you know, use, I have an acronym here called JIFFing, trying to judge, interpret, or fix. So they're listening turns into judging, interpreting, and fixing rather than listening. Um, and so for me, that's where the invitation really helps to get people on the same page and, and giving people space and time to respond to the invitation. Um, that is often really, really more successful in terms of being able to have the kind of conversation I would like to have where we're bridging and connecting and learning. Uh, rather than getting thrown into it together. Any other few comments or feedback? Experience noticings? Let me start to wrap up here. I think when the, I think that um, just kind of pulling back, I think it was Ella's question about um, low impact, high impact. Um, I think, and I could correct me if I'm wrong, Ella, but that's coming out of um, the Vanessa Andriotti's new book. Um, and thinking about power dynamics in conflict just feels like so important. Like, what if you know my existence is that I'm not sure I'm going to make it through each day, versus someone who for whom that isn't a uh, daily worry. And like, if there's a conflict, how do we make visible and navigate those power dynamics in a way that keeps people curious and open and present, you know? Uh, and then the other reflection from our breakout was kind of like, to, to sort of shift the thinking about like mediating conflict or even transforming it and really just thinking about um, container building, right? So that piece of it, and then allowing things to unfold, you know, not trying to control or manipulate. And thanks, Luna, yeah, it's a hospice and modernity. And I will throw on that, uh, how could we resist the temptation of fixing or solving? Yes, yeah, thank you for that, Yayo and Erin, yeah. Definitely if I enter the conflict trying to fix, my listening is going to be really distorted. So I can try to see if I can enter the conflict with a space of curiosity and wonder as a different energy to bring in, like, I'm wondering, I'm wondering about, I don't really understand. I want to know, I want to learn. Then I want to fix it, solve it, get it done with, you know, there's a different kind of energy. And then also to your other point, Erin, just to add to that too, is just recognizing in any given moment in any given conversation, different people are going to have different comfort stretch and panic zones. And so how do I just slow down things enough where that the container can really hold that which means that often not, if I'm the one in the conflict, I can't be the one trying to hold the container um, of the whole conflict. I can be in it. Of course, I can participate in shaping the container, but I can't be the, only, the one trying to also like hold it all and participate and be, that's too much. So um, coming in, having support from, from somebody, some outside people who are not as attached to the situation can also help to make more spacious containers where they're like, okay, you might be having a hard day today. Let's be gentle with that. Let's just have some slowness. Or maybe your life is harder, as Aaron was saying. Maybe there's more challenges there. We can have spaciousness for that. It doesn't mean we can't have conversations together or bridge or connect. It just means that we maybe need to make a container that has a little more spaciousness and recognition that people are entering at different places and they can, we can go, um, yeah, and be, be kind and generous to each other with that as well and with ourselves. There's so much here, my friends. I could talk about this with you for days, weeks, years, months, forever, you know, forever and ever. And it's part of our, our work together. But I guess I just want to leave you with that. Uh, something that a friend shared with me recently that his daughter said that, you know, he feels like 
she, she was like, when we're fighting, it feels like we go away and then we come back together and we go away, we go apart and then we come back together. And I, I love that because it's like, actually, if I can maybe feel conflict like waves in the ocean, that there's moments where we come together and there's moments where we part and we, but instead of feeling like that, that every time we've come apart, that it's, a, a, we've broken down and every time we come together, that's how it has to be forever. Can I feel it more in the flow? And if I can feel that in the flow, then maybe I have more spaciousness to meet others in that flow, to meet each other in their flow of our comfort stretch and panic zones, and then the possibilities of us connecting and, and coming together again. So I wanna thank you all for that, that we can come apart, come together, come apart, come together, and that maybe in that flow of life, we actually continue to move towards what we want in this um, reimagined regenerative world. So with that, I would love to invite you to close um, in the chat. If you'd love to write like a word or a phrase, how you're feeling now, or a little gem you're taking away, um, please put that in. And we're, I'm gonna read it out loud. That'll be our collective poem that we will assemble here on the spot, trusting our collective wisdom, a word or a phrase, how you're feeling or uh, a nugget you're taking away. And I'll give ourselves 30 seconds here to do that. Yeah, I was told I could go five minutes over, so I'm doing my five minutes over. <laughs> All right, beautiful. There's so many beautiful things here. All right, so here's our little poem together. I invite you to close your eyes and take it in and maybe coming back to that conflict you've been imagining and just and adding this energy into it as you move forward. Sipping from the well of collective knowledge. Thank you, resourced, sticky. Wish there was more time. It's always lovely connecting, more space and thank you feeling a curious amoeba energy here. Be listened to. Might it be all it takes? Thankful, recognized, and in awe. Being on time is not the only measure of right. Open. Oscillation between conflict and connection is like in-breath, out-breath. Tiptoeing with grace. Waves and ripples. I also welcome what cannot be shared and named. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time, your energy, your commitment to building bridges and conflict transformation and healing in all our different pain points. Feel free to unmute, say goodbye, say whatever you need to say. I love you, sister. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>